All right, guys. So here we are back at it again. I'm going to start the process. So remember, guys, you've already uh, monitored the EGTs before starting. Uh, make sure they're not 149 degrees or over, which would you could assume that there may be something wrong with the sensors. And also make sure that they're within each other. In other words, don't have them all at 70 and one at 120. That's also a bad sign or 100 degrees. That's a bad sign. That's a 30 degree difference. Way too much of a delta there. Make sure uh, that the ambient air temperature and the... Um, and that the tank temperature, redundant tan temp, temp, tank temperature is above 23 uh, degrees. That also is just to make sure that those sensors are working properly. Um, next thing, right now what I'm going to do is I'm going to start it up. Also, guys, uh, make sure you clear the codes. No codes are coming back up, which would assume there is nothing going on. Uh, also, make sure that the def is full. The customer told me that the, the, the driver put enough dev, that there hasn't ran out of dev. Look, guys, most of the time this happens because you allow the dev to get too low. And then sometimes you don't fill it properly, uh, meaning you don't fill it all the way to the top or you're only putting a, ga a gallon in. The computer doesn't actually have a level sensor. The computer bases everything on the temperature, the how fast it heats up, how fast it cools down. Uh, what it does is it passes different different thresholds on on the level based on how long it takes to heat up how long it takes to cool down things like that there's a strategy that it has to figure that out but if you don't pass that next threshold if it's telling you to add add and you haven't passed that next threshold and you keep adding but you don't add enough the computer doesn't know what's going on and then this ends up happening and this is the pr only procedure to be able to unlock it even if there's no check engine light even though there's no sensor codes coming on uh the only other thing that can be fooling us is an exhaust leak uh, i don't see an exhaust leak but we're gonna see what's going on right now i'm gonna do this first before going in there and turning into that turbo or that exhaust system to see there's a leak that seems to be a little bit of a harder job than doing this so i'm gonna go ahead and start it again uh for any narrow chassis meaning cabin chassis it wants you to monitor 1.3 at 1500 to 2000 rpm until it reaches 190 degrees for regular trucks uh dualies f250s f350s that are non-cabin chassis it wants you to monitor one two so i'm gonna go ahead and start it up you guys obviously there's that uh that dreaded symbol there man the sun's really right there huh well i'm gonna go ahead and start it up there it is so I'm gonna go ahead, there it is. See that engine idle, see manual. So it, it won't even let you go past idle. You give it throttle, it falls on its face. But here we go, you guys. I'm gonna go ahead and uh, rev it up to 1500, 2000 RPM, somewhere around there. And I'm gonna wait till that reaches 190 degrees. And then the next process, the next steps will be taken. Uh, I'll explain that to you guys when we get there. All right, guys, see you in a bit.